Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome to my channel. And today I'm going to show you how to use Pry and how it differentiates itself from IRB. So first of all, let's go into terminal. And let me establish this terminal atom relationship. And I'm going to see the input documents and I'm going to go to YTT because that's where my test one is, so same thing. So if you don't have Pry installed, just do gem install pry. You can do this at root. Doesn't matter. I just installed pry all the time because I made like four videos before this and I had to reinstall it. But everything's fine. You can reinstall a gem. It'll just either get a more up-to-date version or overwrite it with the same exact data. So to begin, it's just like IRB. So you type in pry anywhere and boom you're there so let's do hello world and we got hello world and then we can do a equals two four the biggest difference between IRB and pry is that pry has syntax highlighting so that's really nice you can actually discern what's going on versus an IRB you just have to read everything to be sure that it's a string or it's an array yada yada so here let's do hash, um, let's zip this, sorry, that's it. Now we have a hash and it's highlighted as well. So that's really neat. And then if I open a pane and go to IRB, and I do the same thing, no syntax highlighting, even for arrays or whatever. So. Right off the bat, IRB is cool, but Pry is cooler, and IRB kind of stops there, and Pry keeps going, and what I, I'll show you what I mean by that. So let me exit out of here, so Control D, Control D again to close the pane. So I'm going to go to Atom, and up top, I'm sure you realize that on line one I said require Pry, so it's requiring the Pry library, and let's require it here. So I'm going to do binding dot pry, save. Let's go over, exit pry and do Ruby test one dot rb, and boom. So now if pry or if the binding you have is inside of a, a loop or inside of a section of a loop that's actually being executed or anything really, it will show you what's going on. So if I do find, oh it's one, and then if I do control D and exit out of the first iteration, it should say 2, and it does. And then it's going to say 4, and then it's going to say 5. Then it should say 8, and then 9, and then when I exit, it's done. So that's kind of how Pry works. Also, we can go back in there and manipulate the data without permanently manipulating the program. So if I do find.2s, it'll do string. But then if I do find again, it's back to a fixed num. Um, I can do, there's not much I can do with fixed nums actually, so I'm not too worried about it. Maybe I can do find uh, to float. Yeah, cool. So I can do find that to f dot to s. So this just helps you realize how you can manipulate your data instead of like running your program and watching a huge error or breeding a big error, you can go into pry and see why something's bad. Um, and then that's that. So on the left screen, I'm just using an enum. So I'm mapping through. And if it finds three, then it puts yay. Otherwise, it says not found. So let's get out of this little loop. Let me get rid of the finding.pry. Let's run the program, and it should say not found a couple times, which it does, and so I think it's pretty cool. If you want to know more about Pry, I suggest you just play around with it. There's not much more to it. Once you realize you can add methods to variables that you have inside of your program, you sort of understand that it's not a permanent change. I use it like IRB because of the syntax highlighting. Otherwise, um, IRB isn't as cool as it used to be, but it is handy when you're on a new machine and you know that you at least have IRB available.
but I highly suggest you get pry and mess around with it. If you have any questions, let me know, post a comment, hit me up in Slack. Otherwise, have a good day. See ya.